VRChat is full of many different groups of people, and what's interesting is that everyone experiences the game in a totally different way. Social VR is a completely new concept. It's a place where you can be anyone or anything or go to any place. So as you might imagine, here fosters a thriving and growing culture unlike anything society has ever experienced before. Complete expression, complete creativity, and complete control over the way that you want to experience reality. But here in VR chat, there are some common stereotypes of different types of players that you will encounter. Whether you're a new player trying to get familiar with the cultural terms, or you're a long-lasting veteran that knows somebody who fits into one of these categories, it's really interesting and fun to explore the types of players there are. So let's get familiar with them together. Let's start with the most well-known group to the general public first, memers. If you enter a public lobby and buff Winnie the Pooh runs up to you yelling racial slurs, well, that's one of them. It's the Ugandan Knuckles meme that kickstarted VRChat's popularity back in 2017, and it's often been a stereotype of what VRChat is like to the outside ever since. But of course, it is a very surface level experience that everyone will see on their first day of the game. But if you're bothered by these kinds of people, remember that you can just mute or block them. VRChat is a reflection of the internet, and well, you're gonna get used to seeing that kind of stuff anywhere on the internet, including here. Now let's move on to VR chat mutes. You might start up a conversation with someone when you realize that they're listening, but not saying anything back to you. There's various reasons for this, but a lot of people do have social anxiety and don't like to use their microphone because of that. But there's also a very large deaf community that's developed their own dialect of sign language to communicate with one another using VR controllers. Mute can end up being one of the most expressive players out there. Some know how to use VR features so well, they make it look like they're interacting with their environment so convincingly that you just totally forget you're even in VR. Some players aren't mute by choice as there is a medical condition of the same name. So even though it is common slang, it's good to note that some players don't appreciate the term. Next, let's talk about furries. Furries being people with a love for anthropomorphic characters. They get a lot of internet hate online, and I'm sure you've seen quite a lot of memes about fursuits as well. But VR avatars allow them to express themselves in this way in a safe environment. In fact, one of the biggest VR conventions out there is actually called Ferality, and this summer they got over 15,000 attendees, including raising $22,000 for charity, which is a great testament to how awesome their community can be. So seriously, don't be weirded out by seeing one and start a conversation instead. Another thing you'll notice when you explore public lobbies are the role players. There's quite a few groups that enjoy running around with matching avatars from their made up worlds or favorite fandoms. A lot of times they'll interact with you in character and it can be pretty cute, maybe a little cringe, but an awesome demonstration of how VR lets you go or be anywhere you could imagine. There's also the whole organized roleplay groups that you have to apply for where they have dedicated worlds and events, which is kind of dope, I know. Ah, yes, questies. Players that use the standalone version of VR chat have an icon under their name, letting everyone know they have a less exciting version of the game than everyone else. Quest players can't see most avatars or visit most worlds because of the hardware limitations on the quest. This isn't a problem if they just connect the headset to a PC, but it certainly waters down the game for people who can't. Despite this, the Quest 2 is the most popular headset out there, so in general, this demographic actually contains the most players out there. Questies often get a bad rep because of the fact it's more accessible and has less of a barrier to entry through its low cost, which means more trolls can get it and use the device. Especially because a lot of parents unknowingly hand over their kids free reigns to VR chat unsupervised and that leads to basically every kind of bad situation you could imagine. I like to think of the Quest version of VR chat as the VR entry drug because a lot of people start with Quest only to soon end up with a Valve Index, 8.5 trackers, and a pole in their bedroom. Trust me, I'll explain that one soon. And if you're a Quest user, then I think you'll like today's sponsor, which is Soundcore by Anchor. Soundcore VR P10 is the first made for meta low latency true wireless gaming earbuds authorized by meta themselves to work perfectly with Quest 2. These earbuds provide seamless audio and visual VR gameplay under 30 millisecond latency with their Lightning Sync wireless technology. You're able to pair simultaneously to your phone via Bluetooth and your MetaQuest 2 with the included USB-C dongle to answer calls without ever needing to pause your gameplay. Although their sleek light-up design does perfectly match your Quest 2, you can totally use them with other devices as well. 
whether that's your PC or PlayStation or Nintendo Switch or Steam Deck. You can even use the instant switch feature on the app to swap between any audio devices that have a dongle attached, all with just a click. The Lightning Sync wireless technology uses a 2.4 GHz high-speed wireless connection, custom chipset, and superior LC3 codec for lossless audio transfer. But also, you can't not look cool wearing these things. I mean, come on, look at them. And for only $100, you can check out the link in the description to grab a pair of VRP10s yourself and stay seamlessly connected to the virtual world we all love. And back to the video. Dancers are people who use full body tracking to, well, dance. Sometimes you'll see them out in public worlds just having fun, but there's also many places like full body tracking heaven that cater to just this kind of type of player. There's lots of exotic dancers around, as well as street style dancers who are able to do crazy tricks and stuff that I honestly still don't understand how they do with the headset on. The most common way to achieve full body tracking is to attach them to your feet and your waist, but some people use up to eight for way more accurate pinpointed movements. It's really cool to watch and I've even seen people go as far as to install poles in their rooms to line up with virtual ones to spin around on. Pretty dedicated, huh? Crushers are a type of person that go into public worlds or events with the sole intention of, well, crashing people. They'll overload particles and effects to their avatars that computers just straight up can't handle. Experienced users will hide lower trust ranks like visitors or new users for this reason, since crashers usually won't do this on a main account. This sucks during events, but thankfully it's not too common to experience. It's annoying, but don't let the a-holes ruin all your fun. On a more positive note, there's a huge LGBTQ plus community that I just have to highlight. I mentioned before with furries that people feel like they can express themselves better by choosing an avatar that represents them. And it's a very similar story here. I've made many trans friends here, and you'll definitely find that the general VR chat community is super open and accepting to all types of people when it comes to identity. Experimenting with different gendered avatars is encouraged, and it's a pretty eye-opening experience that I do recommend to everyone to try out at least once. I think self-expression is one of the most important parts of using VR, and I couldn't go without mentioning how life-changing this game can be for LGBTQ friends. In public lobbies, you'll always notice full-body users sitting in their corners chatting, and if you go up to them as a new player, well, a lot of times they'll just straight up ignore you. These players are the highest trust rank. Trusted users. These purple people have a funny reputation of being kind of elitist because they've spent a generous portion of their lives living and breathing inside of VR chat. So sometimes talking to them can be a pretty awkward interaction. I promise not all trusted users hanging out in public worlds are like this. Oftentimes they'll be some of the most helpful and also excited to have you there. But it is a pretty hilarious stereotype that you will see happen. Like I mentioned before about hiding certain trust rank players to prevent getting crashed, trusted users will often mute new players entirely in their safety settings as to not be bothered or pulled out of their immersion. If you've ever gone in and felt like VR chat was too clicky for you, it probably is why. One community that I spend a lot of time in are VRChat Reavers. There's more than a handful of nightclubs in VRChat, and because of time zones, there's pretty much a party going on at all times. There's dubstep clubs, underground techno venues, beachy music festivals, and literally everything else you can imagine. Once you go to an event, it's impossible not to get hooked. You really feel like you're actually there. And DJs will perform live with their headsets on, often with a live VJ as well, putting on visuals in the back. A lot of the dancers that I mentioned show up too, and because of VR CDN, shout out to them by the way, you get super low latency streams coming into the world for the sounds and visuals. And look, you don't have to drink if you go into a club, but you'll definitely be hearing cheers every so often, which leads us to the next type of users, the drinkers. Holy heck, there are a lot of drinkers in VR chat. Again, because of time zones, there's friend groups or parties going on 24-7, and you'll encounter a lot of tipsy players everywhere you go. I love partying and drinking in VR, don't get me wrong, but you'll definitely feel some heavy pressure from some different friend groups to join them on daily drinking, which gets unhealthy fast. It's cheap, it's convenient, and it's social. It can be a little overwhelming depending on which communities you're a part of, but just like in real life, it all comes down to the type of people you surround yourself with. I made a video talking to someone who drinks so much because of VR chat, they actually ended up in the hospital and almost dying. So seriously, please take care of yourself and your friends. 
Desktop users. A lot of people don't actually know that you can play VR chat without the VR part on their PCs. It's kind of comic to see still avatars standing completely straight and pulling the default dance animation out at clubs, but they're generally accepted in every community. Sometimes I don't really understand personal space and run around maps, which is jarring for VR users to have someone pass right through your face, but most desktop users do end up getting VR later on. Heck, I only played for three months before I felt the burning jealous desire to join by buying my first VR headset. Sometimes it's VR players being lazy, but if you're considering buying VR for the first time, then honestly hop into desktop mode first and scope things out for yourself. The final group I'd love to mention are the mirror dwellers. Yes, I couldn't not end with this one because it's just so stereotypically funny at this point. There are people, and I kid you not, who literally invest thousands on full body tracking in the best VR headsets just to sit in VR in front of a mirror. I swear, it's like getting brainwashed. No matter what hangout world you end up in, there's a group in front of a mirror cuddling their friends and sometimes not even talking, just staring deep into the endless infinity of their own faces. There's nothing inherently wrong with this, but considering this is supposed to be a social VR game, it's pretty funny how antisocial this group is. And there you have it, the 15 types of VR chat players you should know. There's obviously way more types of people and communities out there, but these are some common terms and stereotypes that I think everyone who plays the game should definitely be aware of. Let me know in the comments about your opinion on these groups and which one you think that I should make a video about next. Like this video if you enjoyed and subscribe to the virtual reality show. Definitely check out my Patreon as well if you enjoyed this video so that I can keep making ones just like this. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. I've been your host Fia and I'll see you in the next video. Bye! Special thanks to this month's Patreon members and virtual VIPs, Black Amethyst, Dark Punk, Dutech, Dutchman101, Gamut, GS Genesis, Kaimis, Kaze Ryu, MJR117, N and N, Neoplasm, Mayor, Penny, Prism, Rai, 6000333, Silver Spartan, Score Maller, Snake Eight Head, Signer, Third Eye, Sally Wasituna.